So we've talked about encryption, but how exactly does encryption work? And uh, really, really, really basic encryption might be something like ROT13, uh, also known as the Caesar cipher, because Julius Caesar would use this to send uh, messages and encrypt those messages. He'd write it down in, in an encrypted format and then send the message with a courier. And then when the message got to its destination, the person receiving the message would know how to decrypt the message. And, uh, and therefore, they would understand what Caesar was telling them, uh, which might be like, make another Caesar salad. They're so good. Um, or maybe not. The, <laughs> the, uh, so how does that work? How does encryption work? Why would he want to encrypt it? Well, if he's sending a message he doesn't want other people to read, if the courier got killed or mugged, right, and if the message wasn't encrypted, then uh, then the, whoever had the message would be able to read it. But if you encrypt the message, unless you know how to decrypt it, you're not going to be able to make sense of it. So how does the Caesar cipher or ROT13, how does that work? Well, take a look at this little code right here and see if you can figure it out because I blacked out the answer. And, uh, and quickly you might be realizing, oh, okay. If I rotate 13 characters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So H is 13 characters away from U. And, uh, and so if I wrote down U, when I unencrypt that, it becomes H. If I wrote down R, when I rotate back 13, it becomes E. If I wrote down Y, when I rotate back 13, it becomes 11. When I wrote down B, when I rotate back or forward, it becomes O. And, uh, and that's how you'd encrypt it. So that's the Caesar cipher. And uh, that's really sort of the basics of encryption. And anything, you know... Uh, it just becomes like more sophisticated beyond that. So instead of having an encryption key of rotate 13, because that's the key you need to encrypt and decrypt, instead of having an encryption key of rotate 13, the encryption key becomes much more sophisticated to where a human want, wouldn't want to sit there and figure it out. But the machines, when they apply that key to the encrypted message, they're able to unscramble the encrypted message and show what the real message is. And so that's what encryption is all about. That's how it works. <laughs> if you learn a little bit more about it, you might learn about public keys and private keys and, uh, and stuff like that. But I don't really think that's worth going into. We could take a quick look at this. The email message is created by the sender who then uses the recipient's key to encrypt the email. Right. And so, uh, the, you know, the email content is transmitted over the Internet in encrypted form. The recipient receives an encrypted message and it opens using email program when the when prompted by the program, the recipient enters his or her private key to decrypt the email content so it becomes readable again. So these keys would be uh, like two different numbers, and, and this number would be private, and this one would be public, and, I could, and it, I could generate different public keys, and that would encrypt it, and, uh, and then I could throw that key away, right? But nobody has this key to decrypt it, and so the software that's used to encrypt and decrypt uh, uses you know, allow somebody to enter a slightly different number uh, or whatever when they're encrypting it, and uh, and then it's a private key to decrypt it. So you have to have the private key to decrypt, but lots of people could encrypt and send me stuff. Uh, so that's kind of how the two key system works. And of course, there's a lot more to know about encryption. Entire courses are taught on it, but that's the that's the basic intro. This is Caesar cipher rotate 13. That's the basics of encryption right there.